Good morning, and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday in Lent. This is uh, week two of our uh, kind of forced experiment in doing Facebook Live worship, so uh, I welcome you from wherever you might be, your living rooms and, uh, well, probably your living rooms, I guess I would assume. But um, We are continuing to make improvements to this, so hopefully uh, things are, the quality and especially the audio will be getting better as we go, and uh, we'll continue, continue to attempt improvements from week to week. Uh, one note on Facebook, I just realized this last night, there is an app, if you have a smart TV or an F- Amazon Fire Stick, uh, there's an app called Facebook Watch, and it gives you access to all Facebook videos, including live streams like this one. Uh, so for future reference, if you don't have that and you, you have a smart TV, um, install that and you can watch it on your big screen and will be almost life-size in your living room. Uh, We do have a bulletin available for you to use to participate and follow along in worship from your homes. It's available in an email that was sent on Friday as well as on our website, and I I believe right here on Facebook you can find it as well. So uh, you can either print that at home or uh, open it up on a separate device, and you'll have it all right there in front of you. Uh, We don't know how long this whole thing is going to last, but please know that uh, Pastor Ashley and myself and our entire staff are working hard to remain connected to you and... uh, continuing to be church together even as we are physically separated. Uh, Continue to watch for email updates from us with important announcements. Uh, Continue to check the Facebook page for all sorts of things. Uh, Call or email the church office, please, if you are not on our email list and you would like to be on that list, and we can include you on that. Uh, For the time being, uh, note also that our office remains open, normal office hours, so you can call or email us, and we will be here uh, to connect with you that way. All right, I think that's all I have as far as announcements go. So now let us center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship by turning to the confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven and in in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. We sing verses 1 and 2 of the hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. throughout the world for the unity of all let us pray to the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Help save and defend us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us by your gracious life and death for us. Bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though COVID-19 should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estates and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My 
my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul and Lord haste the day when my faith shall be sized the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul Our first reading is from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see, they look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abidinab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily down upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. 
Holy wisdom, holy words. Our second reading is from Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Holy wisdom, holy words. We will now sing Return to God twice through. I invite you to remain seated for this very long gospel reading. Oh wait, you probably already are seated. The gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? And he said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask 
him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Why did this happen? Why is this happening? How could this be? What has caused this? There are many ways to ask the very same question. There are many ways to inquire about the cause of a situation or a circumstance. There are many ways to root out blame. The version we hear in today's gospel is this. Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Whose fault is it? Who is to blame? Is it the sinfulness of the parents that has caused this or the sinfulness of the son? Tell us. We humans want to know why things are unfolding as they are. We want to know who or what is to blame for our circumstances. We want to know because knowing the cause, being able to point the finger, is a way of controlling what feels like an uncontrollable situation, and we humans love control. We crave it and we manufacture it because control makes us feel good and powerful and we do not want to acknowledge the reality that we live in a chaotic, uncontrollable world where things just happen. There isn't always something or someone to blame. Jesus knows we love control. Jesus knows we want to understand why things are unfolding as they are. Jesus knows we want to point a finger and cast blame, which is why he does not play the game the disciples want him to play. Cause or blame, it doesn't matter to Jesus. So he responds to their question, 
who sinned, this man or his parents, and he says, rolling his eyes, I'm sure, neither, (laughs) neither this man nor his parents sinned. I'm not playing your little game. Maybe this man was just born blind. We don't know why. But through his blindness, God's works are going to be revealed. Jesus doesn't cast blame or project about the cause of the man's blindness. Instead, he sticks to what he knows. He assures his disciples that God is going to use this man's blindness. God is going to show up in the midst of this uncontrollable, unexplainable thing. God is going to be revealed. That is what Jesus knows. And that is what Jesus communicates. He doesn't conjecture or make an educated guess. He sticks to what he knows. That blindness is not caused by sin and that God can use uncontrollable, unexplainable things to reveal God's glory, to reveal God's goodness, to reveal God's love. Jesus sticks to what he knows. And so does the blind man himself over and over again. As the story unfolds, the Pharisees are relentless in asking him, are you the man that was healed? And the blind man continues to respond, yes, I am the man. And then they are relentless in asking him, well, how did this happen? How were your eyes opened? And the blind man continues to respond, it was Jesus. He put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I see. I was blind, but now I see. Over and over and over in the story, the blind man sticks to what he knows, that he had an encounter with Jesus, that Jesus took mud and spread it on his eyes, that he was sent to wash in the waters of Siloam, and that having experienced Jesus, he was healed. He could see. His life was forever changed. This is what the man knows. That an experience with Jesus transformed him forever. And this is what he communicates over and over as the Pharisees question him again and again. He sticks to what he knows. There is a lot we do not know right now about the world we live in, about the COVID-19 virus, about what the future looks like. And that's scary. There is a lot we can't control right now, like where we can go out to eat and who we can spend our time with and what the next day is going to bring. And that's scary. We are living in unanticipated times. There is deep grief and anxiety everywhere. We do not do well with uncertainty. We would much rather be able to control our lives or at least pretend to. It is hard to get out of bed in the morning wondering what new crazy awaits. We are not built for this kind of extended unknown. There is so much that we do not know. And that is scary. But there's also so much that we do know. And we can stick to what we know. Like Jesus, who knew that God would use this blind man even if he didn't know why he was blind. And like the blind man himself who knew that Jesus had healed him. Who knew that he was blind but now could see. So what do you know? What do we, as the people of God, know? We know that God is with us. God is present in the scientists who are working diligently to find solutions and cures, in the healthcare workers who are providing healing, in the neighbors who drop off donuts or bars, and in the family and friends who send a quick text of encouragement. God is with us. We know this. 
We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus. Not a virus, not a quarantine, not a bad day, not a stressful night of poor sleep. Nothing can separate us from God's love. We know this. We know that God is our refuge and strength, that when we feel mad or sad or confused or lonely, we can turn to God, that when everything seems upside down and when it seems like nowhere is safe, we can take shelter in God's arms which stretch out wide for us. We know this. We know that with God as our light, we need not fear anything or anyone else. Social media might work us into a frenzy and the news might make us more and more scared each day, but God's light shines and this light cannot be overwhelmed by any darkness. We know this. We know that Jesus meets us in our suffering and provides hope in the midst of deep despair. We need look no further than the cross and the empty grave to know that nothing is too final for God to use and transform. Nothing is too hopeless for God to redeem and reconcile. We know this. So let's stick to what we know. Let's cease our conjecturing Let's lay to rest our incessant questioning about why and what cause and who's to blame. Let's let go of all of the uncertainties and all the chaos and all the confusion. And instead, let's remind each other of what we know. If you need a reminder, Call or text or email me and I will remind you. Call or text or email each other and remind each other. But let's stick to what we know. And what we know is what Jesus knew and what the blind man knew. What we know is this. God shows up in the midst of uncontrollable, unexplainable things. What we know is that God can use these uncontrollable, unexplainable things, be it blindness or virus, to reveal God's glory, to reveal God's goodness, to reveal God's love. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the offering. Oh, no. 
We can't physically pass the offering plate to you, so please consider uh, giving online. We have uh, a way to do that through our website at holynativity.net, or you may continue also to mail in your offering envelopes to the church office. Thank you for your continued generosity in this difficult time. Now, turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow. Bring rain to lands suffering drought. Protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Guide leaders in this time to work together to slow down and stop the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day, especially those sick with the COVID-19 virus. Accomplish healing around the world through the work of doctors, nurses, scientists, researchers, and all those who work for healing. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of insight, help this assembly gathered together yet apart lift up the unique gifts of each person, no matter their physical capacity, cognitive ability, or sensory need. Help us be creative and brave in making our ministries accessible to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give you thanks for your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the light of God surround us, the love of God enfold us, and the presence of God watch over and protect us. For wherever we are, our God is also there. We close as we began in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our mission hymn, verses 3 and 4 of Be Thou My Vision.
Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.